Just one verse from God's Word tonight. It's found in the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 18. The book of Psalms, and we're in Psalm 18. And I hope, and I pray tonight, I hope and pray that this one verse will not be for any person in this meeting tonight. I trust and I pray that this one verse will not relate to any person in this meeting tonight. Now, Psalm 18, and the verse I'm referring to tonight is verse number 41. Psalm 18 and verse 41, and I hope tonight that this is a verse that doesn't relate to anybody in this service tonight. Now, what does Psalm 18 and verse number 41 say? Now, listen to what it says. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them, not. Now, that's a strange verse tonight. But that's a verse that the Lord has laid upon my heart to preach from tonight. They cried, but there was none to save them. It was a sunny Sunday afternoon, early in the afternoon, just outside the town of Lurgan. Two brothers who were fishermen arrived at Oxford Island on the shores of Loch Ness to go out for, a, for an afternoon's fishing. These two men who were brothers got into their wee fiberglass boat had their fishing tackle and all prepared to go out for a lovely Sunday afternoon's fishing. Everything seemed to be well, and they looked forward to this day. They fished these waters often, and mind you, these were treacherous waters. This was a very dangerous part of Loch Ney, but but these two brothers knew these waters like the back of their hand. And so these two boys headed off in their wee fiberglass fishing boat for a day's fishing. And things was going well. And they decided to go on round the corner and sail round the coast to the come to a wee place outside Achali called Golly's Gate where there's a pub. And they thought they would pull in and get out and they'll go in for an hour or two into the pub, and then head home. But after they were there for half an hour or so, the barman came to the brothers and says, Listen, men, do you know there's a storm coming? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll leave you two men home. Don't you take a chance and sail home tonight. I'll bring you home. The two brothers says, Ach, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Don't worry about us. Listen, we've sailed through every storm and gale there was, and there never anything happened. We'll be all right. He says, and the barman said, No, listen, listen, boys. Let me take you home tonight. I'll take you home tonight. The two boys says, Listen, we'll be all right. They bid everybody in the bar good night and safe and all the rest of it. And they headed for home. And as they headed for home, there was no sign of any storm. But as they cornered past, turned the corner, and the shores of Oxford Island was in sight, something happened. And they never made it. Two brothers never made it. They told their families they'd be home before dark. Darkness came, but the two boys never appeared. The families raised the alarm and got, came to the shore. And the brothers' car was parked there, and they began to line the cars up and put the headlights out, but there was no sight or sign of anybody. Two days they searched that shore, two days. And divers then came, and from Golly's Gate pub they trawled the bottom, 
And as they turned the bend, they discovered the boat at the bottom and the two bodies lying on the bed. And you know, friends, do you know where they perished? Do you know where they were lost? They were lost in sight of the shore. And I'm sure whatever happened that night, I'm sure whatever happened, them two men cried. Them two men shouted for help. But there was none to save them. Lost in sight of the shore. They cried, but there was none, there was none to save them. I want to bring just three wee thoughts tonight that God has given to me for this meeting. And the first thing God wants me to bring to your heart tonight, I want to call it undeniable Warnings. Do you know, friend, the Bible is filled with undeniable warnings? You know, my mother always said, and she's right, and she's always right, even though she's wrong, she's right. You never argue with your mother, not my mother. And she'd always tell me, and you fishermen will agree with me, and it's true, isn't it? The sea, the sea is nothing to be fooled with. The sea has to be respected. The sea is no safe place. You men know and I know and everybody in here knows the sea has claimed many lives because the sea is no mercy. And so many have died according to the sea. And that's why we do have lifeboat societies and that's why we have people who risk their lives to save people from the perishing sea. I'm going to tell you what happened to me way back in the early 90s. Well, it was mid-90s. When we were down the caravan, we had a wee blow a boat. You know the wee boats you get in the shops? And you blow it up with a foot pump. Well, we took it down to the beach one day, and Nathan, my son, jumped in and he says, Daddy, Come on, me and you, and we'll row out to the lighthouse. The lighthouse. And I knew the tide was coming in, and the me and Nathan got in, and we started to row about. And the next thing, he says, go on ahead, Daddy, we'll go out to the lighthouse. So I thought I'd go out a few yards, and we'll go out to the lighthouse. Well, do you know, we rowed away, and I rowed away, and him and me were chittering away, rowing away. And I'll tell you, friends, we were so far out, we were so far out between us and the shore was the jet skis. And that's how far we were out. And I'll tell you the truth. The moment I realized I was too far out was when I could hear nothing. And the beach was crammed. And all I could hear was the water splashing up against this wee boat. And I began to panic. And all I could think, if anything happened, we had no life jackets on, not a thing. Friends, I'll tell you, if I'd done a foolish thing, it was that day. Not only did I risk my own life, I risked my son's life. And I turned the boat round and I started to row back in again. And then my wee lad says, Daddy, would Jaws be here? <laughs> I says, no, son. If we, can, if we can make it past the jet skis, we'll be all right. And you know, friends, I was never as glad to see the shore at Cranfield again. And what seemed innocent, and what seemed harmless, became so dangerous. You now listen, friends, I want to tell you something about the sea tonight. The sea's like sin. The sea's like sin tonight. Because sin will take you further and further and further and further away from the heavenly shore. 
And if you're not saved in this meeting tonight, listen, I'm not talking about you're being religious because being religious does nothing, does nothing for you. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about being saved. I'm talking about knowing Christ as your Savior and trusting in Him alone. Listen, if you're not saved tonight, every day you live, sir, every day you live, dear, takes you further and further and further and further away from the shore tonight. And sin will take you further and further and further away from God. And you know, friend, the Bible says a lot about sin tonight. Sin's dangerous than the sea, more dangerous than the sea tonight. Because sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, and that's eternal death. You know, friends, this evening... There's a man who lived, we'll read him about him in, in Luke 16, Luke 16. A man who lived in, just like you and me. And the Bible says, and he died. And the Bible says he was buried. And we're all familiar with people living and dying and getting buried. But we're not so familiar, familiar with the next wee bit, because it says, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. You know, friends, beyond life and death, there's heaven or hell. And we need to think about what lies beyond life and death. It's heaven or hell tonight. And God wants to warn you tonight to think of where you will land if death should come. You know, there's a great verse. It's a very strong verse in Isaiah 14. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? You may say to me tonight, listen, but I'm good living, George. That's all right, but it's not good enough. I go to my church every Sunday, George. That might be good, but it's not good enough. But George, I do nobody any harm. Listen, that's good, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough, friend. And the Bible is filled, friends, with undeniable warnings that if you should die with, on the sea of sin. But I'll tell you something else about the Word of God tonight. It's not only filled with undeniable warnings, it's filled with unquestionable pleadings. Thank God the Word of God tonight is filled with unquestionable pleadings. You say to me, well, George, what do you mean unquestionable pleadings? Who's doing the pleading? I'll tell you who's doing the pleading. God's doing the pleading. God's doing the pleading. Let me tell you, friends, tonight, listen, are you listening now? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And my dear unsaved friend tonight, on a cross on Calvary's hill, God sent his Son to be crucified. To be punished for your sin and for my sin. To take your place and my place. And to suffer and to bleed and to die. So that you and I could be saved. And thank God that day on Calvary's cross. He finished a work that counted for all of eternity. Because on the third day he rose again from the dead. And tonight he's a living Savior. And thank God tonight his word teaches that the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth from all sin. And this book, God's living word, is filled tonight with unquestionable pleadings. Do you know one of the great pleadings from this book? One of the great pleadings that comes from the mouth of the lips of the Lord. Listen to what it says. Isaiah chapter 45. Listen to what it says. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there's none else. 
And tonight, my dear unsafe friend, he loves you. There's no doubting about it. He loves you tonight. The cross declares that he loves you. And tonight he pleads with you to trust him, lest you should perish and be lost forever in a lost sinner's hell. You know, friend, tonight, listen. God wants you tonight to reach out. And he wants you tonight to reach up. And he wants you tonight to take hold of his nail-pierced hand. Because tonight neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Because no church can save. No religion can save. No creed can save. No minister can save. No pastor can save. There's only one Savior tonight, and that's the Lord Jesus. But then I want to finish tonight with the unanswerable questions, cryings. And here we are tonight. They cried, but there was none to save. O oh, sinner, the Savior is calling for thee. Long, long has he called thee in vain. He called thee when joy lent its crown to thy days. He called thee in sorrow and pain. How many times has he called you, love? How many times has he called you, sir? Called you through sorrow. Called you through pain. But friend, you reject it. But listen to what Genesis 6 and 3 says. You know what God says? God says, My spirit will not always strive with man. Do you ever think of this tonight? With this I'm finished. Do you ever think tonight if God was to speak to your heart and tonight was going to be the last time and God may never knock at your heart's door again? God may never throw the lifeline to your length again. Because don't tell me tonight you can get saved whenever you like. You'll never get saved whenever you like. You'll only get saved when God calls you. Oh, sinner, the Spirit is striving with thee. What if he strives never more, but leave thee alone in thy darkness to dwell in sight of the heavenly shore? The old hymn says, the time will come when Christ will say, your days on earth are o'er. When you are doomed and cast away, you'll hear my voice no more. And friend, you'll have no excuse. Because in love for your dying soul, he sent his son to save. Thank God there's one to save tonight, and there's one who can save, but don't you leave it tonight. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found tonight. Call upon him while he is near. Because tonight you can miss it. And end up in a lost sinner's hell. And to think that there was one who loved you and died for you on Calvary's cross. Who could have given you life eternal. Who could have brought in the peace of God. Who could have forgiven your sin. And taken you to heaven. Our friend. Don't you let this verse tonight be for you tonight. And they cried but there was none to save them. But there's one to save tonight if you'd let him. Save he may and save he must. Let him save you tonight. For none of us know when our days are over life comes to an end. Let's bear in a wee word of prayer, please. Lord, tonight, I pray earnestly 
that God, your Holy Spirit, will speak tonight and will strive tonight through what has been sung and what has been spoken. We well, thank you, Lord, for your love and for your mercy and grace. But most of all, we we'll thank you for your Son that you sent to die to save. Help us all tonight to consider our latter end and to think of where we will spend eternity. And may there be none tonight in this meeting foolish enough to miss your call. And Lord, tonight, I just leave the eternal issues of this meeting to thee. And Lord, that you will see. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn, 230. Please, O sinner, the Savior is calling for thee. Long, long has he called thee in vain. He called thee when joy lent its crown to thy days. He called thee in sorrow and pain. Now we're just going to sing the first and the last verse, please, and remain standing for the closing prayer.